In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the TCP IP suite of protocols. At layer four of the OSI model, we find two of our primary protocols used on all corporate networks and across the internet as well. And they are the transmission control protocol, TCP, and the user datagram protocol, UDP. Now these two protocols are competing protocols. A segment will only use either TCP or UDP. And really, it's a matter of how certain is it that we have to get this information to the destination. If it's really important that you get this packet, this segment, this payload of data to the recipient, then you'll pay a higher price and use a more certain delivery mechanism, and that would be TCP. If we're doing that recipient kind of a favor, and it really doesn't hurt us much if he doesn't get this information, then we might use a cheaper and faster protocol called UDP, because it is fast and cheap and has very little overhead. Now, typically, it's the application developer who wrote the application that created the data. He's the guy who knows what this data is and how important it is that we get 100% of this data over to the destination anytime we need to use the network relative to this application. So the guy who wrote the program makes a determination whether at layer four of the OSI model, the transport layer, we will initiate the TCP protocol, high cost, slower, but guaranteed delivery because TCP is connection oriented. Before the sender starts sending any TCP segments, the sender will reach out to the destination and establish a session, a connection, by using a three-way handshake. The three-way handshake is three frames from source to destination is sent a syn or synchronized frame. The destination sends back a synchronized acknowledged frame, and then the source sends to the destination an acknowledged frame. This three-way handshake, these three frames establish the connection or the TCP session between sender and recipient. So that's the connection-oriented part, and that is 100% overhead. There's no actual data that commuted the network during that transmission. Now, the guaranteed delivery comes by the positive acknowledgement that the recipient must send for every segment he receives. So when the recipient understands they've established a TCP session with a sender, every segment that arrives, the recipient will process it up the stack to layer four, verify that the payload looks like it's intact, and then at that point, send an acknowledgement frame back to the sender for this segment that was just received successfully. This way, the sender knows that it got delivered. Now, if a segment goes without an acknowledgement being returned to the sender, the sender assumes that the segment got lost and will simply retransmit that segment back to the recipient. So this is the guaranteed delivery of TCP. Now, UDP, as we said, is quite different from TCP. It has no overhead or very low overhead because there is no connection, no session established. There's no three-way handshake. So there's none of that overhead associated with UDP. When the UDP segment is ready for transmission, the sender simply sends it out. And that's the end of the story because there also is no acknowledgement expected or required from the recipient. So the sender simply puts the data on the network media and then assumes that it got delivered and doesn't actually know or care whether it really got delivered. So it is considered to be connectionless because there's no session established. It is also considered to be best effort delivery because there is no acknowledgement required for any of these segments that are delivered with UDP. Now, another thing that happens here at layer four of the OSI model, the transport layer, is the identification of the source and destination port numbers. These port numbers range from zero to 65,535. There's a series of these that are referred to as server-side ports, also called well-known ports. And then there's a series of these port numbers that are referred to as client-side ports that come out of what we call the ephemeral port range. Now, ephemeral implies that these are temporary use. So here's how this works. A server on the network has a listener 
an application that is listening for inbound requests for the particular service. That listener is bound to a port number so that when a request comes in to a specific port number, the server understands what service is being requested. The server hands that request up to the appropriate server-side application. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a collection of the server-side port numbers that come out of the well-known ports. These well-known ports range from 0 to 1023 and are typically bound to server-side applications, services that run on your network that a client may request. So if a client is opening his browser and he wants to browse a web page, he'll send the request to server-side port 80. That would be the destination port 80. And that way, when the segment is received by the server, it looks at the port number at layer 4 header and says, oh, hand this request up to the web server. Now, the client must also receive that information back and hand it to the proper application running on the client computer. So the client also picks up port number out of this ephemeral port range, also called the client side ports, ranging from 49,152 through 65,535. He simply makes up a number out of that range, let's say 58,000, and uses that as his source port number when he sends out his request. Now when the web server sends a response back, he sends it to destination port 58,000, and the client now knows to link this payload to the browser, and he hands that data back up to the browser so that the web browser can properly process this data. So here we have in the layer 4 header, TCP and UDP, we have source and destination port numbers that are also identified in this layer 4 header. Now here is a list of protocols, network services if you will, and their associated port numbers. As you can see, most of these port numbers range in that server side port number range from 0 to 1023. However, we kind of overran our expectations on the number of server side services that might eventually be needed on a network. So you see some of these server side port numbers went outside of that well-known port number range 0 to 1023. With this, we're going to take a break and we'll pick up with our TCP IP suite of protocols in the very next lesson.